Our guest today is George Lucan, Managing Director of the Onshore UK Gas and Oil Specialist, Angus Energy. Good morning, Donald. Welcome, George. Welcome back, in fact. Yes, indeed. OK, so 2020 is the year when Angus Energy is going to be is revenue uh, producing, is that right? That's absolutely right. This is our target, both as a gas and, and as an oil producer. And, and we're a very different company in that regard to the one you interviewed a, a year ago, which was almost still entirely an exploration company uh, and very high risk. We like to think we're a much de-risked company now, uh, focused overwhelmingly on, on production and delivery. So Salt Fleet Bay has been a transformational deal for you? Absolutely. It was a, a big risk at first, but we've slowly de-risked it. We were given 2.5 million quid and told either abandon this field or make it work. And we, we took the view almost instantaneously that the kind of reserves we were looking at there meant we were going to try and make it work. And we've de-risked this slowly. We de-risked it for the regulators by proving that abandoning it would be well, well within that budget. Uh, and then we de-risked it from a production point of view with this competent persons report you saw released uh, a, a week ago, uh, where we're showing almost double the estimated recoverables uh, that we were saying were, were there back in uh, July of last year. So Salt so Fleet Bay was once the UK's largest onshore uh, gas field. Yeah. If you could, you, you own 51% of it. If you could summarise the opportunity uh, to Angus Energy. Well, the opportunity is in these recoverables. 32 odd billion cubic feet. Uh, each billion cubic feet is worth, worth about 4 million quid. So um, in total, you're talking about 130 million pounds worth of uh, recoveries, gross in the field, of which we get half. Uh, we reckon after costs and capex, that pre-tax cash flow is 50 million quid over uh, just, just over 10 years. So it's uh, worth 50 million pounds over 10 years. 50 million quid pre-tax cash flow to anger shareholders. That's about 35 million after uh, the kind of taxes we, we, we're likely to pay over that period. Um, that's... 10 times our market cap, um, uh, alone over the next five to seven years, we'd, we'd hope for uh, uh, three uh, to four million quid uh, per annum, because the best recovery is clearly in the earlier years. So is, that, is that a net figure? That's a net figure. That's net cash to anger shareholders every year. So equal that's to what our you're going to be making. In two their... years' time, that's what you're going to be making. Making, absolutely. Terrific. Terrific. OK, uh, first gas. First gas. Well, we don't like to call it first gas because uh, Why not? this field was actually, you know, the first well was dug in 88. This field has been running since 96. And top, top, Nick, you know, some of the best kit was left behind by, by our predecessors. So uh, we can... How do you know it's all going to be still working now? Well, we, because it's, it's been maintained fantastic. We can go right up to the wellheads of the two producing wells and see the pressure on the valves, which, of course, has risen a little bit. Uh, since, since it was shut in, as, as reservoirs naturally do. So it wasn't shut in because there, there wasn't gas there. It was shut in because the refinery uh, was closed nearby. Uh, that's, that's the fundamental uh, thing here. And I want to... How just do you work around the lack of a refinery? Well, <laughs> <laughs> refinery, uh, the refinery that w was there actually had taken a huge amount of gas and oil from the North Sea. We were an onshore element which happened to... Uh, utilise some ah. of its facilities. You were the icing on the cake. We were the icing on the cake. And not a lot of its facilities. When the gas comes out of the ground, it comes out reasonably clean and pure. Uh, ours comes out with a bit of water and a bit of something called condensate, which is various sort of uh, fractions of hydrocarbons. Not that dissimilar to a barrel of crude, but trades at a £10, uh, a £10 discount, roughly. But the bulk of it is just regular methane. What you've got to do is you've got to take the water out of that methane uh, uh, and any other impurities, which, are, which there are very few of, then you've got to compress it like mad, 75 times. So you need times. a processing plant? Uh, you need a little processing plant. And when we say processing, what we really mean is you've got to cool the thing down. Uh, and like your fridge, if you cool the air in it, you see the ice uh, condense around the fridge and you can scrape it off. And, that's and the remaining air inside is very, very dry. That's essentially what we do when we talk about processing. We, uh, we cool the gas... Uh, uh, take out the water, uh, occasionally run it through a bit of what's called glycol, 
uh, which, which is a, a dehydrator, uh, and then you compress it like mad. Uh, when I say like mad, like 75 times to 75 bar, uh, and that's what's called grid spec. Um, so, uh, okay, and so how, long, how long will it take uh, to, get, to go through all those processes, and when will you actually be revenue generating? Revenue generating. Well, um, we would hope uh, to complete connection, because that's the last bit of it. The, the current pipeline ran to uh, the Thetford Refinery. Thetford Refinery is next door to the National Grid Entry Point, bank next door, so there's an extra 600 metres of pipeline we've got to put in uh, in place. That connection I'm targeting you, 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 for late you, you, summer. You can cope with 600 metres, though. We can do 600 metres. Uh, that connection I'm, I'm targeting for late summer. I think we've advised August. Uh, I still want to do, do stick to that timetable because it's the Fenlands, basically. Uh, I don't want to be doing uh, this in uh, in November in the rainy season. Uh, so that's that's the key point. George, can I stop you there? It's not Murmansk. It's only the Fens. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you say that, but there's been moments where you could take a boat across those fields. As, uh, so we want to get Fair that enough. done while, while we're dry. Um, and, and that all comes down to... Um, to, uh, to regulatory permissions and, and when we get the go-ahead. So when do, you, when do you think? When do we think? When do you think? When, when, will, when will gas well, be flowing, even if it's not first gas? Gas be flowing in, in Q4. We, 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 that's, that's our absolute latest target. Q4, right. and that includes, that's, you know, that means you start being revenue generating in Q4. Yes, that's, that's, what, that's our target. Um, happy days. Happy days, indeed. And I just want to, just going through the steps there, We'll submit uh, planning uh, at the end of this month, and that gives you a, a very clear timetable to all the other actions and all the other regulatory But you're asking for planning in, inside a must be a highly industrialised area already, so... Well, yes, or, or very sparsely populated one, Donald, so... so. Uh, and, and one where we're not doing any drilling, so uh, at least at this stage. So uh, the only thing that uh, you should hear after all the acoustic baffling we put in is the tweeting of... Uh, birds uh, and and there should be no significant uh, flare ongoing flaring or things you associate with things that upset locals uh, in, in other planning applications. There isn't any flaring, is there? Uh, we have to have a flare there for health and safety reasons yeah. uh, in case we ever had to vent the pipeline, but we don't use it on an ongoing basis. No. Okay. Do you, do you anticipate any problems? To what extent is there any risk left in this project? To what extent is there risk? Uh, the thing that keeps me up at night isn't getting it done. One way or another, I, I'll get this thing done, that's for sure. Uh, and I'll get it done with some flex on time maybe, maybe with some flex on budget, not too much, but I'll get it done. I, and I'm going to get it done because there's 50 million quid at the end of it. Yes, uh, that is cash flow. that's a pot at the end of so, the rainbow, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I, I, you know, I'll run over a granny to get it done. Yes, but, sorry granny. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what worries me actually if anything at all, is making sure this thing runs smoothly for another 10-odd years. So it's the choice of kit I'm taking on board ah. now. It's the degree to which I can manage downtime in the future. The, the guys, my predecessors, they, they, had a, they were unlucky. Got the wrong compressor at the refinery, and they had downtime of eight months. I don't want that ever to happen. So I've got the guys, our technical team here, I've got guys from uh, really some of the best process engineers, uh, a guy, my technical director, has been at British Gas for, uh, before us for, for, for 10, 20 years. I've got the guy on the field. He's been on the field for 20 years. Uh, these guys are really good. And what we're overwhelmingly working out now is something that will be a workable, reliable, extremely safe solution for 10 years. That, uh, that if you tell me that's the challenge, not connecting it, not getting to first gas, but making sure this thing works r responsibly and competently for a long period of time. And you told me before the interview <coughs> began that it's a buyer's market in terms of, of expensive of high-end kit. Oh, kit, yeah. It is falling off the shelves. Uh, I mean, you can poke a stick at compressors all over the place now. Um, even refrigeration units, you know, quite high-end ones, uh, so, so uh, are, are going at unbelievable prices. Mm. Uh, we want to get exactly the right ones. We have to meet not only health and safety spec, but this is national grid we go straight into. Some, some fields, they go into a local grid. It's a little bit easier. The pressures are lower. Here we're talking about very high pressure, very high quality, has to be metered, has to be monitored by grid. They're bang next door. They want to see everything that we do. 
Uh, so we're talking about very high standards here. But uh, all in all, that's good for you all, though. But high standards means it's going to work for 10 years. Exactly. And you're going to get even, even uh, revenues flowing for those, those years. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's the target. Great. Um, let's take you back to the wield and your 25% holding at Balcom. If I understand you correctly, you're operator at Balcom? We're operator at Balcom. Uh, we're looking forward to planning there, as uh, said, on the 24th. So you've got a planning application on the 24th of March. Well, that's we've, your next got, we've got the committee meeting then. So uh, that's the moment where uh, West Sussex, Sussex County Council uh, can decide whether or not we fall within um, uh, their minerals plan and whether what we're doing there is going to be done responsibly and properly. What are you asking for at Balkan? What we're asking for uh, isn't permission to drill. Uh, it's permission to uh, extract and produce uh, over a three-year uh, extended well test period. Um, with, and, and you might ask, reasonably, uh, test, uh, why are you testing for such a long period of time? Yes, it's a three-year test. It's a three-year test. Uh, and uh, we've had a lot of questions about this. Uh, I'd say the answer was in our, our and others' experience in the wheeled in terms of the particular reservoir we're addressing, which is the Kimmeridge. Uh, as we all know, back in our, our unhappy uh, exploration moment of Brockham last year, uh, we, we discovered that on the edge of the uh, wheel you can find absolutely nothing uh, in the Kimmeridge, uh, nothing movable at any rate. So, uh, and it's not movable neighbors... because it's too, it, 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 it's too heavy, it's, it, it's too cold. But why is it not movable? Why is it not movable? It depends on the fracture system, the maturity of the oil, which varies very considerably from, uh, you know, perhaps even a kilometre to a kilometre. Uh, and that's been the experience of our, our, our neighbour... Uh, UCOG, uh, I think at Broadford Bridge, there's wildly variable results we get from the Kimmeridge. Uh, so I think we're, we're being entirely uh, honest and open with, with all of the uh, regulatory agencies and council and, and in our community liaison when we say we really don't fully understand this reservoir. We're very confident there's oil down there because this time we saw it uh, when we last uh, drilled. Uh, but it's, it's a, it makes it a very different picture to Brockham. But how much? How will the pressure behave in the reservoir over uh, a three-year period? We don't know. And, and we need that period before you go and sink another five million quid in the ground. You know, you, You're still proceeding, so you, you, you think there's good news to be had out of Balkan, though. And quantify the good news for me. Quantify the good news? We'd hope 300 uh, barrels a day. Uh, and, and that's... Flowing on a, on a regular, steady on, basis. On a regular, steady basis. Yes, not a J-curve decline from, 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 uh, uh, from some uh, outrageous initial pressure. Uh, and that's coming from a technical team chastened by, um, by exploration misses elsewhere in the wheeled. Well, you learn every time, you, every time it doesn't work, you learn from it. I'm you sure. learn a lot more. And I think we are learning. And I think within three years' time, the the picture of the wheel will be very much better for those uh, remaining players. Uh, and therefore, the, if you like, the dollar one from, from the dollar of exploration will be a, a, a much better equation for investors. Uh, it's been difficult up to now because it's been basically pioneering. Uh, 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 what, what level of flow would make Balkan commercial? Uh, what level of flow? Oh, uh, anything north of 75 uh, barrels quite, quite would be comfortably commercial. 300 is, is, is a good figure, uh, a, a good sensible figure, and one we believe is sustainable, as you rightly pointed out. We don't want um, a spurt uh, and then nothing after six months. Would you consider another Balkan? Or, or have you had enough with Lidsey and uh, Air Brockham? I've got to say we've got a preference for gas now. Uh, and we're driven in that... Uh, by not to say there isn't gas in the wheel, by the way, but um, we're, we're driven in that by uh, an overwhelming sense uh, that uh, in terms of sustainability, uh, we'll have a longer-term picture uh, with gas than we will with, with oil. Uh, not to say we think oil's going to go any time soon. The wheel seems to be a rather difficult regulatory environment, if I may say. Well, that's the other point. Um, anything south of... Um, uh, really, uh, south of Watford Gap uh, is pretty tricky. Uh, understandably so, very built up areas, uh, and the weight of argument against uh, supposedly unsustainable practices like oil ex extraction is, uh, is tipping things uh, against the drillers. 
Gas also presents one other thing, which is, and interestingly, we're looking at, uh, uh, for the pipeline extension, uh, we're looking at hydrogen-ready piping. So we, we've got an eye to the future there as well. Uh -huh. uh, gas has, uh, we believe, a future. Right now, the cost of cracking methane to hydrogen is still quite high. Explain that for the audience. What difference does it make if you put hydrogen into your gas? <laughs> into your gas. Well, if you burn hydrogen, there's no CO2, basically. All, all you get as byproducts uh, is water. Uh, and heat. So that's a gas boiler heating solution, isn't it? It is absolutely clean gas, uh, and also one which is used already to power motor vehicles. Can't yet power airplanes. Uh, it doesn't provide the lift. Um, we don't. We haven't designed the turbines to provide the lift. But it definitely will do your heating, your your cooker, and your car, and it's entirely 100% clean. The difficulty is getting our natural gas and converting it. Uh, and right now, the processes of doing that exist, but they're still relatively expensive. And they have their own small carbon cost as well. OK, last two questions. News flow. What news flow can we expect from Angus Energy in the next six months, the next nine months? OK, what we hope is approvals in, in both of these planning applications. We hope to present a take-off take contract with a major for uh, the gas at Salt Fleetby. We hope to present a list of kit uh, uh, for which we've got deposits on or dibs on or for, to, to complete that, a full detailed design of, of the site for the shareholders to take a look at, uh, and a much more detailed uh, timetable, literally down to the each week of each stage, uh, which we kind of have here, but we don't, we don't disclose. The one thing I'll say is, is you know, we're, we're down, the, the, the slowest piece of kit is your timetable. So, so, but right now I'm holding to the timetable that, that, that I mentioned to you, which is Q4 revenue and uh, end of Q3, end of summer, uh, gas, gas line connection. So that's, that's the story. But a lot of steady good news, because a lot of activity of, of, of a company in delivery mode. George Lucan, Managing Director of Angus Energy. I'm going to end it there. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank for, you. Uh, no, thank you so much for uh, bringing this up to speed.